So let's start. Um, hello, my name is Herman, and I will be presenting pronto. I hope you are seeing the, the presentation. So let's start by saying that prototyping is at the core of interaction design. From static sketches in a napkin to quickly visualize the user flow to physical prototyping with clay, for example, to explore the form of a design. However, some designers rely on video to prototype dynamic system responses, and we saw it recently. Uh, they combine paper prototyping with the wizard of, of technique to let them play the role of the computer. But how a technique like video prototyping can be used specifically for augmented reality? Well, if we have time and money, we can use video editing software to create an illustration of the AR experience like Google did here with Project Glass. If not, in 2018, I introduced a new video prototyping tool that is called Montage that let designers quickly sketch and animate on top of video. However, this is only in 2D, faking the AR experience without any 3D information. So what are the current tools that give AR designers access to 3D positioning in space? First, we have the development tools. They require programming and include game engines such as Unity or Unreal. And also, and we have also SDKs like ARKit for iOS and ARCore for Android. But this slows down the prototyping speed, particularly in early stage design, and also exclude non-programmers. There are few commercial prototyping tools that don't require programming. However, they focus heavily in face tracking AR, or they provide limited sets of pre-created interaction triggers. To sum up, current tools generally focus on pre-made assets instead of creation, static or fixed animations rather than dynamic scenarios, high instead of low visual precision, and default interactions rather than exploratory user inputs. With this in mind, what would be the design goals for an early stage AR prototyping tool that is simple to use, but also powerful enough to create open-ended designs? To inform the design of this tool, we conducted three formative interviews with expert AR designers to identify current issues in early stage AR design. Four problems stood out. First, all participants mentioned a vast ecosystem of tools to create 3D assets. Other problems are consequences of freedom that the user has while using the system. One of the biggest challenges when designing for AR is the designer's inability to control the camera. Participants also said that the most tedious, that the most tedious uh, task is positioning 3D assets. P2 mentioned that positioning is problematic with death and occlusion. Also, designers consider animation a pain point that avoided laborious manual animation like keyframing during early stage prototyping. To tackle these problems, we propose the following goals. One extra implicit goal is providing a lower barrier of entry to any stakeholder. To achieve this, we made the following decisions. We will use a single mobile device to provide a low barrier of entry. We will use sketching to create low fidelity assets. We will use video to capture the always changing position of the user and direct manipulation, again, through demonstration to position assets and to animate them. With this decision in mind, we build Pronto. Let's introduce Pronto with a scenario. Imagine a designer that is prototyping an augmented reality smart home. He wants to plate AR objects on top of a coffee table, turn on the TV with a flick of a finger, and send likes with mid-air gestures. The first step is acting and capturing. This happened in Pronto's recorder view. After three seconds countdown, the designer starts moving in the environment as if the AR, AR, the AR system is already in place. Sorry, let's put that again. So he moves around, he sees something on the coffee table, then he looks at the TV, he swipes his finger to turn it on, and then he uses a pin and push gesture to send a like. Step two is creating sketches in Pronto's playback view. The previous video is loaded and now the designer can use the tablet in the physical space to position objects in the current frame of the video. 
this happened in real time. The position in the physical space is represented in the current video frame. The tablet works as an avatar to position sketch layers. For example, here, the designer decides to put a new sketch on top of the coffee table and create it. After that, he can change the size. And in this case, he will draw a weather widget showing that it is sunny. The asset remains in place during playback. Step three, enacting and animating. The designer adjusts the video and move towards the TV to create a sketch in the screen. Then he draws the content in the TV by creating a new sketch layer, resizing it. And in this case, he will draw uh, a cute cat. Now the cat needs to be hidden and then revealed with a flick gesture. The designers manipulate the top handle and push it down. He can use the NAC button on the left to start recording and demonstrating the system response. In this case, he is pulling the same top handle, but going up. He presses the NAC button and does the animation. The animation is saved in the timeline and its duration can be adjusted to match perfectly the user input. For the like interaction, he first needs to create a heart at the pinch position. The designer wants the heart to fly towards the TV with a custom spiral animation. Now, instead of manipulating handles, we will move the whole sketch, the heart, with the tablet position as a proxy. This is what we call direct in action. The designer press enact and then moves towards the TV with a spiral path. The animation is saved and he can adjust the duration in the timeline. Finally, to make the cat react, he uses the same process with a shape motion. And this is the final result made in less than four minutes. We can see the weather widget on top of the coffee table, how the user turns the TV, and then sending a like with the response. In terms of related work, there are many air prototyping tools, but they require extensive programming. However, there are a few general non-specialized prototyping tools such as Dart. However, it still requires extensive coding skills to customize the experience. Other tools combine AR and Wizard of Oz, but without the video capturing capabilities, making it difficult to synchronize. For example, 360 Proto specializes in 360 experiences by creating paper prototypes. Proto AR combines paper sketches with clay to illustrate quasi 3D effects. In contrast, Pronto focuses on dynamic interactions. And Pintar com combines digital sketches on a tablet with live AR tracking, but it does not support creation of custom animations and uses video just as an output and not as a design medium. In terms of the implementation, we have these two views, the recorder and the playback. The recorder views a typical AR session, capturing video frames, fixing the word origin, tracking the position of the tablet, and also the position of assets. This information is saved during recording in two files, one that has the time and transformation and a movie file with the pixel buffers. Then we recreate the 3D scene in the playback view. But without the, li the live video feed, we use the video file as the background of the camera. And that will mimic the 3D scene and is represented in the playback. To evaluate Pronto, we conducted an expert review with six AR designers. The first task was to recreate the Pokemon Go capture interaction with mid-air gestures. All the participants were able to finish this task in less than 20 minutes, and it took 12 minutes in average. Then task two was open-ended. For example, P1 created a narrative-based experience. He created an off-screen attention guiding cue, and then this little animation with the Vs. P2 created a racing game with some difficulties. So let's move on. P5, for example, did a smart home experience where each bin knows the type of garbage that it can receive. 
and before created a product tutorial with instruction to be operate to operate this tumble. Basically, participants successfully recreated this advanced AR mechanics using Pronto in a short amount of time. The average completion time was 30 minutes and three seconds. And all participants rank high Pronto's capabilities for exploration and creativity. In terms of future work, we would like to suggest several directions. One is adding collaboration to support multiple designers, to add comments and annotations, and also to take into consideration depth to uh, fix occlusion and to move from video illustration towards interactive prototypes. Thank you. <laughs>